put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Rana 3 Double D in 3D. An extremely sleazy water park in Arizona, I believe is having its grand opening within three days of the beginning of the film and the stepdaughter of the sleazy owner worries that maybe piranhas will attack. And so she and, you know, the cliched good guy go trying to find out if the piranhas could really get to Arizona from wherever it was the first movie took place and yeah, if the water park is actually safe from them. This movie, not counting the credits, is 75 minutes long and that really is just one of the many bits of evidence of just how lazy a sequel this is. I guess I should get the obvious out of the way. Yes, if all you're watching this for, and I can't say that I blame you, is the, you know, nudity and, you know, hot chicks, yeah, there's a pretty good amount of that. However, the basically other half of the reason the gore is pretty non-existent. I was going to say underwhelming, but there's really almost none of it. I've heard that apparently all of the piranha footage, all of the animation, is just reused from the first. While I can't confirm that, I can imagine that that's the case, and what I definitely can say is that the, I don't remember the exact word, but the, the combination of live action and CGI is utterly unconvincing. The piranhas will swim around and swim at the camera and stuff, but they won't really directly interact with, you know, the, the people they're supposed to be eating and such. It's really, yeah, very obviously, so th yeah, it does seem like they just took the animations and stuck them onto new footage. Yeah. <sighs> Where the first one did, I, both of these are kind of almost parody and sort of tribute, excuse me, to these big, gory, sex-filled horror films of, you know, the 80s, but where the first one was actually genuinely, yeah, fairly scary at points, certainly creepy, it, you know, it had build-up. This one, I think it actually tries a couple of times, but it just fails utterly. There is really no tension in this entire movie. So what it goes for instead are jokes, and almost none of them work. They, they are just so dumb and, yeah, lazy that really... There, there are two or three decent jokes, and all of them revolve around Ving Rhames, who returns somehow, and... David Hasselhoff, who basically plays himself, literally he does play himself, and also 
the way that he portrays himself is very much in tune with at least the perception I've gotten of his <laughs> real life personality. He's basically just really happy with his fame and you know enjoying all the attention he's getting. He's there at the opening of the big water park and yeah, obviously there will be some Baywatch references. And that is about it. The plot, if you can even call it that, is just entirely revolved around... Actually, plot, characterization, and I guess conflict, except for, you know, the man-eating fish, man-eating fish, is all revolved, all revolves around sexuality and how sleazy or slutty, depending on which gender you are, a, a character is, you know, it's, it's a genuine, like the, the, the lead good guy, you know, this basically follows the aforementioned stepdaughter, and it's, you know, there, there are basically, there's a three-way drama with her and a jerk guy who we don't want her to end up with, and a good guy who really wants to have sex with her, and that's kind of it, you know. The... Near the end, the film overuses you know, big, dramatic, classical music extremely, but basically in the, in the final third of the film. And it just really shows you just how desperate they were for any kind of material, no matter how unfunny it, it was at all. Jokes just struggle and never take off. As I said, there's really no build-up. Basically, it, there's there's padding and then there are scenes of, you know, attacks. And again, these aren't scary. Part of it is, honestly, even when CGI isn't involved, you can barely see... Like, what is the, the reaction shot and the, or the reaction of the person in danger and the actual danger seldom appear in the same shot and often the editing is so dreadful that you can barely, at times, barely grasp what's actually going on. It's, it's really quite astonishing, the amateurish nature of, of that aspect. Effects in general are really lackluster. There are just a few parts where the effects are maybe, the, like the, the practical effects, are reasonable, but yeah, it's, it just, the movie really reeks of the people behind it not wanting to put any money into it at all. They really just wanted to cash in on the first one, which I definitely recommend just re-watching instead of going to see this. Now... There is some setup, you know, there's basically, I mean, mostly it's for, for jokes, but there's basically, there's, there's setup and then there's attempts at payoff. That, that's the closest thing we get to anything substantial in this movie. There are actually, for a while, I was thinking that this one character, there's this 
fat guy, because fat guys are automatically funny, who pretty much everything he does is just the most sleazy and often the most illogical and stupid thing that you could imagine. And for a while I was thinking that, you know, that's a really terrible character, but then it dawned on me that they're pretty much all like that. They just, they do stupid and sleazy things and yeah, there, there's no one to care about in this movie. Even the, I mean, the, the, there are no real characters. There are just these cardboard cutouts with boobs or dicks, and that's kind of it. But yes, the, the setup, some of the setups for the piranha attacks actually contradict one another. I won't spoil anything here, but just, yeah, it, it's just really a poorly made film. But yeah, I guess if you just really need to see naked hot chicks, then they exist in this movie. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.